The module of China's space station is bracing for takeoff from the Wintang Space Launch Center in Hainan Province. Carrying, with it, uh, carrying it will be a Long March 5B Y2 rocket, which was transferred to the launch area on Friday. Uh, various tests are being carried out prior to takeoff. Ying Hong spoke to us from the location earlier. Well, this is the exciting moment. What you're seeing now is the Long March 5 series launch vehicle that is slowly moving to the launch pad and carrying the core module of China's space station, the Tianhe. And you can hear that people are seeing now, uh, they, are, they are the people who build the rocket and they're the people who build the space station. So this is a really a gathering, that really exciting moments. And it took about two hours for the rocket to reach the launch pad, which is all the way back there, about three kilometers away. And you're seeing now, this is a platform that will carry the rocket to the launch pad. It is a 2,000 ton a platform that will move slowly. It took about two hours to cover this three kilometer distance. Our reporter Zheng Yibin joins us uh, from China Science and Technology Museum with uh, more on this. Yibin, tell us about this core cool module Tianhe and what it means for the whole space station program. Well, yes, Xiao Yang. Actually, the core module, and uh, this name, the Tianhe, is being kept confidential. So no one is, uh, get easy access to that core module. But now, in China Science and Technology Museum, where the models of all the state-of-the-art technologies are being displayed, we can see, uh, back me, there is a model. And joining me now is uh, exhibition designer, Mr. Jai Zhuo, who is specialized in space and tech, science and technology. Let him to introduce some parts. Uh, we would love to know that for this module, compared to the actual core module in Wincheng Launch Center, what is the difference between the two? This is a model, and we have one-to-one -one proportion to restore the look of the actual core module. It is 16.6 uh, .6 meters long with a diameter of uh, 4.2 meters with the actual volume standing at 50 cubic meters. So it's bigger than any other module of the other space stations. And as far as I learn that in this core module there are different parts, could you please brief us about it? Is composition. The Tianhe core module it is composed of four sections. This part uh, we could see the connecting section, resource section, and our life support and control section. In the future, when Tiangong is finally constructed, we will be its position. The core module of Tianhe in the future will function as the core area. It's responsible for central control and management. We can take a closer look at the living and working environment inside. Okay. Mm. From this angle, this place looks like a living space. You make the point. This is the living environment of the astronauts. There is limited space, as you can see. And if we move on, you can see two parts of this capsule. Beside the living room, this is like the office of the astronaut. In this office, there will be a lot of control work And also here, I can see a lot of buttons on the machine. This must be like the central nerve of this core module. And for the Tiangong space exploration, will this office play a very big role? Even though it's just a module, in this model, we have weakened some of the equipment compared to the actual module, and we would love to exhibit its uh, interactive and science promotion functionalities. So in this place, there will be a lot of experiments carried out in the space.
in reality. It seems like I can put my hands inside in the future, whether it's Tianhe or Tiangong. What will be the mission? We imitate the available crude space flights to construct such equipment. We can cultivate plants, animals in the space through our experiments. So it's an imitation. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, uh, back to the uh, launch panel in the uh, in Wenchang Launch Center of the South China's Hainan Province. So we're about to see the exciting moment in coming days, and our CGT reporters will bring you more information from across China on that launching exciting moment. Back to you. Thanks so much for that, Yibing, and uh, it's uh, exciting to see the inside of that uh, core module. Uh, let's talk more about these latest developments uh, with Xu Yen Song. He joins us via Skype. He's the Director General at the Ch Asia Pacific Space Cooperation Organization. Mr. Xu, glad to have you with us. Uh, now, you know, what's the significance? Talk to us about this uh, of China constructing its first space station. Why is it important? What is uh, the Chinese development in, in the recent years that uh, we have seen dramatic? Uh, improvement in the uh, space infrastructure constructions in China. Uh, and also we have achieved demand space flight uh, some 10 years ago. And it's a natural stage that we've, we want to develop a space infrastructure for the human missions, as well as a uh, number of experiments uh, for development of the nation, in particular in the biomedicines, microgravity, fluent and uh, space combustions, and many other microgravity testing so all of this needs to have an infrastructure that is located in outer space. And also it is a step stone for further missions, in particular for the Chinese ambitious missions. And Mr. Xu, and this would be a huge domestic milestone uh, to be achieved, obviously, but it also has significance for international cooperation, doesn't it? So I mean, what do you see uh, in terms of international cooperation in the space sector? Is there more uh, room for that than there is competition? Well, I think uh, cooperation is always slower than competition, but competition brings the space program faster, uh, in, in particular national programs. Uh, uh, but we do see a number of uh, cooperations in recent space missions from China. Uh, for example, this can be started some 30 years ago, cooperation with Russia and many other European countries. And recent years, we have uh, very innovative uh, projects, such as the Chang'e 4, which is landing on the far side of the moon, moon which is unprecedented for human beings. Uh, so on the Chang'e 4 missions, we, uh, we brought about uh, many uh, countries, including European countries and Saudi Arabia, to this mission. And also, we also cooperate on the databases with, the, with NASA. And also on the Chang'e, uh, Chang'e 5 missions, we also see very successful uh, project uh, bringing sample back to the uh, to Earth, and uh, also exploration missions like uh, Mars missions, which also involve many international cooperations on science projects like Double Star with the Cluster Two with European countries, and we do see very good cooperation among the space space community. And this is also true for the human mission. For example, the the uh, uh, Tiangong mission has also been using the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs as a platform to uh, recruit and uh, receive applications from developing countries to put micro, uh, micro gravity testing facilities on board the Chinese mission. All right, well, thank you so much for uh, your insights there, Mr. Xu Yuanzong.